Storage prices have fallen considerably over recent years, and yet Apple is still charging nearly 10 times the amount to upgrade storage in practically anything. Which, when you have a growing collection of you know, treasured family memories, media library, and backups, can be a bit of a problem. So in many cases, the options are, number one, pay for extra storage, which in Apple's case is so, so overpriced, it's an absolute scam at this point. Or number two, add external storage with SSDs. Or number three, cloud storage. Now I actually have a follow-up video coming soon on specifically an SSD buyer's guide, but for this video, we are just going to focus on cloud storage. From the obvious names like Google and Apple and Microsoft, to some names you might never have heard of before, but actually could be a better option depending on your needs. And hopefully we're gonna help you decide where is best to spend your hard earned money. Now, before we get started, just a quick one here to say that like 95% of people watching these videos aren't subscribed. It's actually 100% free to do so and really does help me to create you know, more helpful and sometimes mildly entertaining videos for you. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you just went down below and hit that subscribe button. Now, one of the first decisions you're gonna need to make is how much storage you actually need and how much you're willing to pay for it. And as far as the competition goes, they are broadly similar with you know all of the usual names. Now I'm gonna have all of these linked down below. Some of them also have promotional pricing, so check those out if you're interested in signing up for one of those. Now of note here are those who need a lot of storage, then those who offer the most are either Google at 30 terabytes of Google Drive and then iDrive with 100 terabytes. But there are some workarounds to this. Uh, many providers, including Google, Microsoft, Dropbox, can offer vastly more than this. And Sync even provides unlimited cloud storage. But on the proviso that you sign up for their business plans, which then involves paying for like a minimum number of users, and whilst it may be an affordable way of purchasing cloud storage, uh, particularly with Sync's unlimited offering, just for the purpose of this video, we're going to stick with personal plans without just getting into the intricacies of you know, setting up and having to then manage multiple users on a business account. And also here, lots of these come with other benefits like Google One, uh, Microsoft 365, Apple's iCloud, but again, just gonna focus on storage here. Now I'm gonna throw them up on screen here. And here you can see that Google also offers the most free file storage at 15 gig uh, with iDrive and also Box coming in at 10 gig. Although Box does add some pretty significant file size limits of I think it's 250 megabytes per file, which uh, depending on you know what you're storing might cause you some issues with uploading those to the cloud. And then iDrive has a very exceptionally strong offer of five terabytes for just five bucks 98 per year for the first year only, which then goes up to uh, five bucks 80 per month, which is still one of the most affordable options available. Now, next up, let's talk about uh, privacy and security. Now, privacy first, which is very, very top of mind right now after, at least here in the UK, Apple recently announced they are removing the advanced data protection feature for UK users just because the government here apparently told them so. So one thing that you may or maybe may not know is that Google and Microsoft and Apple and Dropbox and Box all don't use a feature called end-to-end -end encryption, which means that if they you know, chose to, they can actually access your data. Now, to be clear here, this isn't an everyday thing. This is when the police or governments have the correct warrants for them to do so, but not everybody likes having their stuff that, you know, whilst it's unlikely will be ever accessed by somebody else, it's still accessible. Now, the only companies to offer this for consumers are Apple, surprisingly, excluding the UK now, Sync, Proton, and iDrive. So lots of names there that you might not be that familiar with. Now, if privacy is of utmost importance to you, then you should stick with one of these services. The other services either don't offer this or they actually reserve this feature for their teams and business and enterprise subscription tiers. Speaking of teams, this video is sponsored by monday.com because I nagged the heck out of them to become a sponsor. Now we became a paying client of monday.com in December of 2023. So we've been using it for almost well, over a year now and everything is so much more organized than when we were previously using free tools. Now we have a master schedule, which lets us track our upcoming videos, which ones are sponsored or still need work. We also track communication with brands. We log video ideas. We track industry events that we'd like to attend. 
and monitor follow-up actions after publishing videos. And each video we treat as a separate project, which then has the same template, which we use time and time again to assign a certain task to the right person. Now, one of the things that drove us up the wall before was when we needed to move dates around and then have to move all of the, the subtasks. But with monday.com, all I need to do is move one thing and the rest of the tasks from that video then move with it. And with monday.com, it can scale as the business scales to even corporate environments and large teams delivering projects like I was with my previous IT company, uh, delegating tasks to team members, keeping track of the time spent and overall just staying on track with those projects. It has truly been an overhaul in how I run this channel, and I'm so happy Monday.com agreed to sponsor this video. With Monday.com's automation and project management features, you can eliminate repetitive tasks and focus on what matters most, uh, set up automations to handle emails, file sharing, Slack messages, and status updates, so you never have to chase down details again. There's no more clutter, no more documentation hunts, Everything you need is beautifully organized and right at your fingertips. Now, if this sounds like something that could help you as much as it's helped me, give it a try for free with the link in the description. So following on now from privacy, security across the board is pretty similar regardless of which service you go for. As you can imagine, like they're all constantly protecting themselves from all sorts of malicious activity, from those trying to you know, hack into individuals, people's accounts. But linking this to what I've just mentioned around privacy, this is another reason why end-to-end -end encryption is also pretty useful because even if a service does get breached, your data is still safe because you know even the providers themselves can't access your data. But with that said, you know outside of individual people being targeted with a phishing attacks to you know just trick them into giving away their usernames and passwords, there have been no wide reports of the likes of you know, Google or Microsoft or or any of them really being hacked to the point that suddenly you know all of your private files and folders are being sold online. Now outside of this, all of the providers have their data in redundant data center locations, which means if the uh, you know location your data is being stored at has say a natural disaster, you can be safer in the knowledge that it'll be actually replicated to another location and thus keeping your data safe and accessible. Now one area that many people do forget about though are backups because storing your data online like in the cloud which is otherwise known as someone else's computer doesn't mean that it's safe from accidents and accidents are like deleting files or maybe even entire folders full of your data and then not realizing maybe for weeks or sometimes even months later now many of these cloud services will provide something called retention which is where if you delete a file then you have a certain amount of time where you can get it back again now for most places here that's 30 days. But there are some exceptions here. Now, Google is 25 days and Sync is a whopping 180 or as high as 365 days, depending on the plan you're signed up to. And Proton also can be configured for many, many years on their pay plans. But that's not everything because 30 days isn't really that long. Like, you know, what if you deleted a folder you thought you didn't need? and then realize a couple of months later that you, you know, did need it. That is where a proper backup solution comes in. And this is where it can get quite tricky because pretty much all of the cloud backup services are geared towards business accounts. So backing up a personal account then relies on you really uh, manually taking extra copies of your data and maybe backing it up to external SSDs or a NAS drive or another different cloud storage provider. Now, if you know of any, maybe let me know down in the comments below and I will check those out. But ultimately, the service that you use will depend on the type of data and the devices you are accessing that data from. Now, for iPhone users and to some extent just Apple users, iCloud is just by far the most convenient it is you know, built into everything at the operating system level and features such as you know, backing up your Apple devices just happens automatically without you worrying about it. When you wanna upload a photo to social media, you can scroll through all of your photos only if they are stored in Apple Photos. Now, if it's in something like Google Photos, then you have to go find the photo in Google Photos first, then download it to your device, then you can go and upload it and choose the one that's just been saved to your Apple Photos. If you're an iPhone and a Mac user, then you may want to consider one of the other options. Uh, again, personally, I'm using a combination of Google Drive and Apple's iCloud, and that works really well for me, although it does then mean I'm paying two subscription costs per month, when I'd really rather not. I also do have advanced data protection enabled on my iCloud accounts, so that data is secure 
and I'm going to keep it on until Apple pry it from my cold uh, iPhone holding hands at the time. Now, if you are an Android user, then depending on your flavor of Android, then you might be better off looking at uh, either OneDrive or maybe Google Drive, since many Android phones are very tightly integrated with one of these two cloud services. And if you're a Windows user, then you are pretty free to choose basically any of them. Now for unlimited storage, then there is really only one option here, which is sync.com, even though that is a business plan. Uh, you can also technically get unlimited storage with others like you know, Google Drive, but you will basically end up subscribing to a ton of user licenses to increase your storage every time, which just gets super expensive. And for the cheapest, it is no doubt iDrive because of that insane first year price. Uh, but also they are just overall the cheapest, even after that first year promotional pricing. And for the best, a private cloud storage. This is a difficult one because there are so many. Apple, surprisingly, is actually up there if you now exclude the UK because of the whole advanced data protection thing. Otherwise, I would probably go with Sync here and then Proton just because that's more expensive. But yeah, I hope that helps. Let me know your thoughts below and make sure you're subscribed to learn more about buying the right SSD, which is coming very soon. Until next time, bye-bye.